morning, everyone. My name is Amadou Kuyate, and today I have the wonderful opportunity and pleasure of sharing some time with you. And in this time, I would like to teach you about some of the instruments that I have here from West Africa. And in particular, when I speak of these instruments from West Africa, I'm talking about instruments that belong to an ethnic group or people known as Mandang. So when I say Mandang, I'm referring to a group of people who were a part of an empire that existed in ancient West Africa. And these people are still here today. And a lot of times when we say Mandang, uh, there's an association that's made to an empire known as the Empire of Mali. Now, there's a West African country today called Mali, but when we speak of Mandang and we talk about Mali, we're talking about um, uh, a group of countries, that uh, present-day countries, which made the empire. So the Malian Empire had, uh, inside of it, obviously, the country of Mali, as we refer to it now, but there were several other countries today that were a part of the Mali Empire. These countries, these countries are, and repeat after me if you're at home. It may be a lot easier. Mali, Senegal, Guinea, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, the Gambia, Burkina Faso. And these are the main countries that are part of the Mali Empire. You also have Liberia, and it was such a large empire. It stretches far north into a country known as Martania, and as far east into a country known as Ghana. And inside of the Mending people's different cultures, we had different families and we had different responsibilities that members of the community would have. So in some communities, maybe yours at home, you have someone who may run the market or run the store. You may have someone who may be a builder or, or, or a carpenter or an architect. And maybe you have someone who's a baker. In any community, you have people that have many different roles. But in the Mandane community, there's a role for people who have the responsibility of making sure that they retain the history of those communities. And these people were called Jelly. Let me hear you say jelly. Now this term jelly refers to these historians. And the interesting thing about jelly is that when they were teaching their history, they often would employ different instruments. They would, there's an orchestra of instruments that are created just for the jelly. So that when they go among the people and they're giving their history, they can have instruments that accompany that process. So. One of those instruments is this instrument I have here today. This instrument is called kora. Let me hear you say kora. Now the kora has 21 strings, 10 on the right, 11 on the left, and it's made from a gourd called a calabash. And this calabash is covered with cow skin. So, the kora, even though it's the baby of its orchestra, it's been around for many, 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 many years. And the kora is one of the tools that the historians would use when they were going around the communities and teaching the community about their history. When we play kora, we use four fingers. We use our two index fingers, our pointy fingers, and we also use our thumbs. So, I like to say we use our video game fingers. So if you ever play video games, you know you usually use your pointy fingers and your thumbs. So when we play Korra, we use all four of these fingers together. And it sounds like this. or the jelly will be telling their stories, there's music that's created for each story. And just like you have chapters in a book, 
you have pieces of music that go along with the story. For example, if you start at the beginning of the story, it may sound like this. And as you go further into the story, you may begin to hear this. And as you go further into the story, you may begin to hear this. And as you go further and further into the story, you may begin to hear this. And what happens is when we listen to the music, we're able to connect the history and the story with the song that we hear. Very similar to, for example, if you hear me play. Now, I didn't have to say much, but when I play this melody, some of you guys out there know exactly what story I'm talking about. And maybe you grew up in, and in that story, you learned a little bit about a, a young lady named Mary who just happened to have a lamb that would follow her. And very similar to that, when we're teaching our history inside of the Mending culture in the Mali Empire, we have music that is attached to a story in the same way. But again, this instrument in the Kora has 21 strings. 10 on the right, 11 on the left, and it's made from a gourd which is like a cousin's, niece's, nephew's, uncle's brother to a pumpkin. And this gourd is called a kalabash. Let me hear you say kalabash. And they cover the kalabash with cow skin. All right? But that's not all we have today. We actually have a couple other different things I'd like to show you. This next thing I'd like to show you is an instrument that also originates in the Mali Empire from Mandang people. And this instrument may be something that you've seen before. This instrument is called a djembe. Let me hear you say djembe. Now the djembe is a very special instrument, just like the kora is. And the reason the djembe is very special is because the djembe actually, the word djembe is short for another phrase, which means bringing people together for a purpose. That phrase, please repeat after me, is an kaje, let me hear you say an kaje, an kabe. So an kaje, an kabe becomes djembe. And it also has other names like djembe bara, but there are many different names to explain one fundamental thing bringing people together for a purpose. And the djembe is a very special instrument because the djembe has its own language. Just like we have a language that so we're speaking right now, well, I'm speaking English at the moment, right? But just like there are different places in the world that speak English, there are different accents that people use when they speak. Just like if somebody is born in New England, they may speak English one way, and if somebody's born in New Orleans, they may speak English another way, and somebody's born in New Jersey, they may speak English another way but they share a common tongue. And the djembe has a common language that it shares. And that language is based on three primary notes. Three primary notes and many different secondary notes. The three primary notes of the djembe, we have a bass, tone, and slap. 
bass, tone, and slap. So, while we play djembe, I need you guys to take your hands and make a triangle shape, like a pyramid. Now, I have a djembe in front of me, but if you don't have a djembe in front of you, what I would love for you to do is take this shape, bring it down, we're gonna use our lap as if you had a drum in front of you. But you take your shape and your triangle and you bring it right down. If you have a drum in front of you, then you bring it right down to the edge of the drum. Now when you play djembe, you play from this part of your hand up. See? We don't just use our fingertips. We play from right at our knuckle line up in this shape. And you have your bass, tone, and slap. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment to show you how we use bass, tone, and slap on speaking language on the djembe. things about the djembe besides the fact that it has a language like we spoke it has three primary notes a slap tone and bass it's also made from a solid piece of wood and this particular kind of wood I have in front of me is a wood called linke but they make it out of a solid piece of wood they hollow it out shape it as a goblet and they put a skin on the top of the drum now, most times when you see a skin on the top of the drum, it's either going to be a goat skin or it's either going to be a calf skin. More traditionally, they use antelope skin. Now, they use so many different things. You can get a deer skin. You can get a camel skin. You can get a horse skin. But they use different types of skins on the djembe. And the reason that they use different types of skins is the same reason uh, the people may speak differently in different places. It produces different sounds, and they, they accommodate different accents on the drum. So, every factor about your drum helps to uh, give it its own identity, helps to give it a little piece of something different, okay? Now, interesting fact, the drum mass is made like this, with this system that you see here. If you look closely, you'll see that there are rings on the drum. Now, this system with rings is not a system that was created on the continent of Africa. 
It was created, in fact, here in the United States by an African-American barber by the name of Chief Bay. And this barber, Chief Bay, created this system. And he taught this system to some of the Jembe Folos who were coming over from the country of Guinea. And when he taught the system to them, they took this system back to the country of Guinea and they started using it there. And it grew in its popularity. And anywhere you go in the world now, most likely you'll see a djembe with this ring system. Now originally, what they would do is they would sew the skin on uh, and they would use pegs as a different way of sewing. But you would hardly ever see that system now. It's a... Uh, it's like for some of you parents out there, you have to explain to your children that uh, there were these tapes that we used to insert inside of machines called VHS, or you had to actually put a quarter in a phone. <laughs> it's like one of those things. But I digress. Remember, this instrument here is called djembe. And djembe is a part of an orchestra of instruments. When I say orchestra, there's different instruments that accompany the djembe. Uh, most popular, you're going to see instruments known as dunum, which you play with a stick. Or sometimes they play with two sticks, depending on which region you may be from. And these dunums are usually accompanied with a bell called a kinkin, depending on which region you're from. And they are part of the djembe orchestra. Also in the djembe orchestra, you may end up seeing an instrument that looks like this. This instrument is called a bala. Well, this one is a little bit smaller than they usually come where the men and people play them. But this is my son's bala. So he wanted me to be able to show you guys his instrument because he's, he loves music. And this bala is the progenitor or ancestor to your remba or your xylophone. In the chorus, even though it's a baby, belongs to an orchestra. It is an ancestor of some of your uh, more popular modern instruments that you see. There's certain kind of lutes and harps and banjos that all come from the same tradition from which this comes from on the continent of Africa. So, before we do any more talking, I would like for you guys to help me. We are going to learn a song together, okay? If you're ready to learn this song, let me see you go like this. Then let me see you go like this. Then let me see you go like this. Now, the meaning of this song is as follows. Repeat after me. He who breaks the hammock does not sleep well, now, for some of you guys out there, you may know what a hammock is, but for those who may not know, a hammock is this sort of sleeping device that sometimes you may see it attached to two trees and it sits in the middle and some people tend to lay back and rest on it and, and enjoy themselves, you know, especially uh, if you're somewhere like a beach or you're somewhere outside, right? Maybe on your porch, some of you guys even have hammocks. So, in this hammock, the point of the story is if the hammock is broken and you try to lay in it, what's going to happen? You might fall on the ground. You might not have a good night's sleep. So the moral of the song we're going to learn today is to take care of those things that are important to you. And after, I'm going to ask you guys what sort of things that we need to take care of that are important to us. So, in our song, please repeat after me. Say, La mambi ale jo jute. Say, La mambi ale jo jute. Ko le bidona. Now, I'm going to say, La mambi ale jo jute. And when I say this, you're going to clap. And say, Kole Bidona. Let me see you try. Let me see you go. Kole Bidona. 
Again. Kole bidona. Again. Kole bidona. So, when I say lama viale jojute, kole bidona. Let's give it a shot. Lama viale jojute, kole bidona. Lama viale jojute. Kole bidona, mama biale jojute. Kole bidona, you got it. So I'm gonna drum, and when I say my part, you know your part, okay? Remember, your part is here. Kole bidona. So I want to see my clap, and I want to hear my song. Here we go. to learn about some different instruments. We get an opportunity to learn about this one. Who can tell me what this instrument is called? If you remember, that's wonderful. And if you don't, the name of this instrument, again, is called the Chora. And how many strings does the Kora have? That's right, it has 21 strings. 10 on the right, 11 on the left, and it is made from a gourd called a kalabash. Mm -hmm. And the kalabash is covered with cow skin. And does anybody remember who plays the chora? Let me give you a hint. Inside Mandan culture, they were historians. All right. They were called jelly. Let me hear you say jelly. Well, the chord can be difficult to tune. I see a question here. It says, how difficult is it to tune the chord? Well, traditionally, the chord was not made with these keys that you see here. When I was growing up in my father's generation and the generations before that, we had rings that were made out of cowhide on a large dowel that goes through the instrument. And these rings were called konso. And you will push the rings up and down this large dowel in the middle in order to tune our Quora. So, as people begin to travel more and they begin to bring the Quora into different environments and begin to play music with lots of other kinds of people and different musicians, it was important that they be able to be tuned a little more conveniently. So you started to see different systems where they now... Well, I made this one. Well, where I'm from, Jelly, they all make their own instruments. So I make my chorus and I make my, my djembe's. And I added these keys here, which make it easier for me to tune. So, when we're tuning, we have four tuning systems that are traditional. And you learn those tuning systems the same way 
you might learn a prayer. The same way you might learn a nursery rhyme. It becomes a melody that's uh, said over and over again in your mind. Uh, for this tuning system I am in now, someone asked if the chorus was fully chromatic. Um, this chorus is not. This is tuned in a traditional system. Though, you do have chorus now that are made with sharp harp levers, which allow the chorus to be chromatic. But I am able to play in diatonic scales. So I have a, a so. But if we were on the keyboard, I wouldn't have all 12 notes in the cycle. So uh, let me see. Let me come to some other questions. Yes, if you have a question that you'd like to ask about the coral or the djembe or the jelly, I'd be very happy to help as best I can. If not, uh, I'll take a moment to play another song in coral for you. Only because where I'm from, it's my responsibility to share history. And when we share history, we use instruments such as this. that are coming up. Ah, can I spell the name of the string instrument? This instrument is spelled K-O-R-A. Kora. K-O-R-A. And I appreciate uh, you guys tuning in with me today. Uh, thank you to Strathmore um, for allowing me to share with you. And I know you guys can look forward to other amazing and wonderful artists that will be presenting through Strathmore. But 
Before we go, I need for you to always remember that when you're learning about things that you don't know in the world, and this world has so much to offer, always come with your cup empty. Always be open-hearted and open-minded to learning new experiences. So I'd like to thank you all. Again, my name is Amadou Kuyate, uh, and I'm happy to have shared this time with you today. Okay? So have a wonderful day, everyone. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.